Look at all these electronics, vacuum cleaners, flashlights, computers, toys. Hey there, I'm Joel Green and welcome to Curiosity Quest Goes Green, the show that continues to explore what you're curious about. Well, today's quest letter came to us from Roger in New York and Roger wrote, Dear Joel, I've heard that you're not supposed to throw away electronics. Does that mean they're recyclable? Well, Roger, because of you, we have made our way down to North San Diego County at a place called E-World Recyclers, where we're gonna find out which electronics are recyclable and how you recycle them. So let's get started on today's Curiosity Quest Goes Green. Hey, look, mice. <laughs> What are you doing? <laughs> uh, having fun with uh, some of the toys here? Uh, wow, you didn't tell me you would have uh, big kid toys here. How you doing, Bob? Nice to meet you, Joe. Hey, How well, are thank you? Go, I'm having a good time here. Good, so, good. This is great, because we're talking about e-recycling and electronics, and yet you have this cool toy that you've allowed me to play with here. It's actually e-waste. Even though it's mainly plastic, it does contain some circuit boards and a battery. Uh -huh. Batteries are banned from landfill here in California, and it has to be processed as scrap. Absolutely. Same thing with the buggies. Oh, wow. Same thing with the trains. All the toys that have batteries are now considered e-waste here in California. Even stuffed animals that have Even the stuffed here. animals, yes. <sighs> no Microwave kidding. ovens, coffee makers, stuffed animals, radiators, heaters, <laughs> fans, hair dryers. You name it, uh, in California, everything has been banned from landfill and it has to be processed as some type of a scrap. So now, here at eWorld, give us a little bit of background. You obviously process, you recycle. Mm -hmm. For those of you at home that do not understand this yet, when we say you're recycling electronics, what are you doing to it? There's several different ways to recycle. A lot of, um, a lot of people think that you have to recycle into scrap commodities, which is one way of recycling. You can bring everything in, Tear this piece apart, separate out the plastic, the circuit boards, the wire. If there's any metal on it, that would be separated as well, and you process everything as a scrap. Or there's another way that you can look at something like this and say, wait a minute, it still works. Obviously, you found that out. <laughs> Maybe we can fix it. Maybe we can find a buyer for it and generate some revenue and return some of that revenue back to the, uh, the original buyer. So instead of recycling, you'd be reusing? We do a lot of reuse, a lot of refurbishing, a lot of resale, yes. So now this is a, a pretty big facility, and I, I've had the, the chance to <clears throat> tour the facility in style, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And it's a pretty big facility, and I see everything from computers to cell phones to, you know, TVs, toys. Yeah, it's, it's mind-boggling. It is mind-boggling. Mm -hmm. I mean, where, I guess, where do you start? Most of the stuff that's in here is coming from one of two places, uh, although we do some individual drop-offs and people can drive up to the drop-off window and, and drop off their scrap. Mm -hmm. We do large collection events with big manufacturers such as Sony and Waste Management. Uh, we also do collection events by ourselves here every weekend. And then um, there are a lot of cities and counties that do household hazardous waste collection events where they'll run an event on a Saturday or Sunday, collect all this scrap, and then they need to send it somewhere, and it ends up coming down here. <laughs> and so I see a lot of them are in boxes. Yes, they're all in Gaylord boxes. And now, yeah. in these boxes, you have you know, pretty much everything in there, right? The reality is, is that on every piece of every piece of material in that box, once separated, it's gonna all be recycled into a new product. Okay. The plastic, the copper, the steel, the glass, uh, aluminum, whatever it may be, it just needs to be separated, size reduced, shredded, ground, processed, which is what we do here, and then 
sold back to the manufacturing industry or to the uh, commodity industry. And we're gonna see all that today. Right? Absolutely. How do you know what electronics are recyclable? Plastic cups, there's a little sign there that shows you and I think they use the same thing or it might just say recyclable on the box. Because what, maybe it's plastic? <laughs> it should say it on, on the bottom, kind of like water bottles do, I think. If they say toxic or, or explosive, maybe. What electronics are recyclable? Uh, the simple answer to that, Joel, is everything. Everything with a plug or a battery can be recycled. Everything? Everything. Hey, Bob, is this rice, rice cooker recyclable? Yes. All right. What about this half deep, whatever's in here? Deep fryer, yes. Deep fryer. How about refrigerator? Yes. Oh, come on, everybody has one of these in the home. You shouldn't throw it away. It's no. in the trash can. All right, little barbecue. Yes. Something's cooking. Better let it cook. What about the dartboard? Come on, what are you doing with the dartboard? It has a battery. Yes. All right, All right. you heard him. All right, what about the uh, copier? Yes. Kid, wow. And you can actually reuse this too? Parts? Yes. And you're gonna look at it. Oh, there we go. How about a, how about a, oh, wait, wait, wait. What is this? Hello? No, what was that? Hello? 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 No. Oh. <laughs> Hello? Hello? I'm okay. Okay. Hello. We got all these phones in here. Yes. They're all the same. Yes. Yes. <laughs> what about this? What is this? A treadmill? Yes. You mean you just don't throw tread? I'm sorry, I'm trying to get through here. You just don't throw treadmills in the trash can? No, sir. He said no. I got that. <laughs> All right. There we go. Treadmill. Oh, come on. Rocking horse. Has a battery. That, it does? It does. Hmm. All right. But look at this. This is like, like a, a little kid's game right here. And uh, out, outside. Ah, uh, solar lighting. Solar lighting. Batteries. Battery pack. Battery pack. Well, it's got a cord. Mm -hmm. It was attached to it. Mm -hmm. So you're going to go through all this. Every box. And do something with it. Was it a baby monitor or something? That was a pump for an aero bed. Aero bed. <laughs> I like when the mattress is, woo, you feel, all right, very good. And finally. Remote control helicopter. Fun fact, fun fact, fun fact. Here's your fun fact. Studies estimate that 75% of old used equipment is in storage, where it simply becomes useless and less valuable. In California, which is a, a little more aggressive than the rest of the nation right now in environmental law, everything with a battery or a plug has to be recycled. It cannot get thrown in the landfill. Okay. Now, are there other states that have this the same rules? Yeah, that's another multifaceted question. Yes, there's about there's about ten states that have followed in suit with some type of legislation, mainly to ban it from landfill. Okay. The theory here is that. Inside these boards, uh -huh. there's arsenic, cadmium, mercury, all kinds of different chemicals. Mm -hmm. Those chemicals will break down and leach into the water supply, and it ends up affecting the drinking water. Okay. Okay. So it's about protecting us in the long That's run. That's correct. Keeping them out of the landfill. That is correct. All right, so now what, okay, when we bring him here to E-World, or when we take him to any electronics recycler, what are you going to do with this? Um, this is actually a separated part of a server. Mm -hmm. That's also a server. A the, box is, the box is a motherboard. This is all computer parts. Mm -hmm. The reason that we're separating these out a little differently than the others is because these are a little bit older. You can see the gold. The gold is actually real gold. This is real gold. It's, it's real it's gold. gold. There's yeah. gold. You've heard the term, there's gold in them there hills? There's gold in them there hills. <laughs> now, I want to tell you, it's a gold plating. It's not a solid piece of gold. Fun fact, fun fact, fun fact. Here's your fun fact. Many people discard computers every three years. Uh, I'll take that here, Bob. Let me store it for you. All right, so, Bob, you're talking about how when they pull apart these computers, nothing gets thrown away, right? That's correct. Nothing gets thrown away. Everything gets segregated into different boxes, which is actually different types of material. You happen to be standing in a box full of uh, power supplies, which is mainly copper, steel, a little bit of plastic on the fan, but everything can be recycled. Wow. What else do we have down here? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get Joel's out of the box here. Let me see here. Uh, all right. Another box of power supplies. Uh-huh. Some of these are heavy. This is a box full of disk drives. CD-ROM drives, floppy drives. This happens to be for a laptop. This happens to be for a desktop. You can see the difference in size. Yeah. Okay. Oh, absolutely. 
All Over right. here we've got circuit boards again. Oh yeah. These are um, these are server boards. There's your favorite. <laughs> Gold. <laughs> Gold. Woohoo! More circuit boards. What? These are actually add-on cards, video cards, network cards, those types of things. Again, all has gold. Uh -huh. Okay. And motherboard. Okay, where the CPU would go. Uh -huh. Okay. You can see by the shape of that one, it's no good. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna be I'm gonna be exposed here <laughs> for all those computer people out there. The CPU does that where you does it store anything? I know people at home are going like, God, oh, Joel. <laughs> the CPU is actually what performs all the functions on the computer. Well, that was my it's, next guess, but the, I want to make sure that you were up on your oh. <laughs> CPU knowledge, Bob. Actually, what holds all of the information is the hard drive. Hard drive. That's right, Joel. All the right. hard drive. This happens to be a hard drive from one of the computers that they've torn apart. Uh -huh. We treat hard drives a little bit different than the rest of this scrap. This has information on it. It could have proprietary information on it. It could have personal information on yeah. it. We make sure that these get pulled out, thrown into a bin. And now you have everyone's information right there in a the bin. It's going to go back to that very large gated area back there that under camera, 24 hour surveillance, uh -huh. and it's going to get shredded. Oh. Shredded into little tiny pieces, about three quarters of an inch. All the information will be gone forever and ever. Amen. <laughs> okay. When it comes to computers, what is a platter? It's probably the plate it sits on. I think that's where you keep your food when you're eating so that you don't spill it on the computer because that could be dangerous and ruin the computer. The cover of the computer? A plate. <laughs> a platter is something, a website. A platter is the piece in the inside of the computer that makes everything work. That's all on your hard drive. All the information is stored on what's called a platter inside of here. It looks like this like a miniature CD. This is where everything is kept, and this is what must be destroyed. And I'm here at the shredder. Hi, can I come in? No. no okay, do I need a password? Yes. Um, okay, uh, how about uh, e-waste? No. Oh, recycling? No. E-cycling? No. No, uh, e-world? Let's go. Mm, you're getting close. Can I please come in? Yeah. Okay, go. Whew, there's a magic word. Right. the magic word. Cool, let's shred. Ooh. Ooh. It's hungry. It is hungry. It's we gotta hungry. feed it. I gotta feed it more? Yeah. Should I look in there or no? You can because you have a safety glass on. I'm the shredder! You're doing good on the hard drive shredding. You're, you're like, like a natural. Natural. Oh, the fadeaway. Let's go see what it looks like. Fun fact, fun fact, fun fact. Here's your fun fact. Lead accumulates in the environment and has highly toxic effects on plants, animals, and microorganisms. All right, so we are, we've shredded. And let's see what, what we've shredded here. Get a, ooh, oh, yeah. Cool. Here, oh, I'll, wow. I'll grab it, too. Well, it's not going to hurt your hands, no. is it? No. All right. All right, so there's a lot of metal in here. And you know, Joel, the beauty about this is that inside of this material, there's precious commodities, and nothing goes into a landfill, so nothing's wasted. This will go to another downstream recycler mm -hmm. who will further process it and extract all the value out of it, and it gets reused to make new products. Wow. You know, that's amazing because you... you just seeing how the whole e-waste thing works. And to think that it wasn't long ago that we were throwing everything that could be reused in a landfill. Right, but when Title 22 reg legislation kicked in, mm -hmm. it made it completely illegal to throw away anything with a plug or a battery. Here in California? Yes. Here in California. And this, so hopefully it'll spread throughout the rest of the nation one day, right? Yeah, and the beauty is, again, this all has value. So yeah. why throw it away? We're solving two problems. Absolutely, absolutely. Is there any gold in here? No gold, not this time. Oh. Okay. Well, then I'll we'll let it go downstream then. All right. Fun fact, fun fact, fun fact. Here's your fun fact. In 2005, 63 million computers were disposed of and generated 5.3 billion pounds of e-waste. So Bob, you have a unique process from separating the leaded glass from the 
unleaded glass? That's correct. <laughs> what we have is a hot wire separator. It's a pretty unique, um, rel relatively new machine. It uses heat and wraps heat around glass. Once, once the glass heats up from the hot wire, the molecules start to move really, really fast. And as that starts to move really, really fast, the, the wire will de-energize, and as it de-energizes, cold air is blown onto the hot glass, and the cold, hot temperature differential causes it to fracture. Wow. So it fractures right around the line that it was actually put together, and you can separate the leaded from the non-leaded glass. So that, that noise I'm hearing That's, is yeah. the, the pressure or the uh, cold, hot? That, is act, that noise that you're hearing is compressed air. It's coming out of the little coily blue space age looking uh, <laughs> uh, nozzles and it just blows compressed air. No refrigerant or no air condition. It's just cold air coming from a, a compressor onto a hot tube. Huh. Okay. It cracks and it separates. And the next question will be, what's the sense of separating the glass? <laughs> And the reason is, is that CRTs have always been the biggest problem in the e-waste industry. They're big, they're heavy, they're glass, they're bulky, they get, people get cut. Uh, there's not a lot of CRTs being remanufactured because it's phasing out of the industry. So you can't find alternative uses for mixed, commingled, leaded and non-leaded glass. You have okay. to separate it. Okay. So what we've done is tried to create value in something that very has very, very little value. Okay. okay. Now, and the glass, uh, again, the, the lead part, this is what was banned from the landfills That's a long correct. time ago. The lead is the funnel, the back portion. The back okay. portion. It's kind of like a funnel. And what you look at on the TV, that's, that's okay. The panel. That's yeah. the panel glass, much thicker, non-leaded. Non or sometimes a minute amount of lead. Okay. Okay. Uh -huh. All right, and the, the little piece on the end part is called the gun? That's called a, that's called a gun. It is a uh, combination of ceramic over uh, nickel and stainless steel, and it does have a recyclable value. Again, everything can be recycled. You just need to put a little time, effort, or machinery into separating, segregating, and creating value. CRTs are becoming a thing of the past. These that's big, correct. big, huge, bulky TVs. We have that's LCDs, correct. plasma. How do you recycle all that? It's a relatively new uh, process. It's a very easy device to fix and refurbish. Okay. So you'll see a lot more of that. We do a lot of that here. Um, you keep going back to that whole refixing, reusing things. So you're well, not just recycling, <laughs> yeah. sending it out, turning all the commodities into to, to new things. You're actually taking these things and you're rebuilding them basically, right? A lot of the times we are, yeah. We, we, we call it the five to one or the five to three theory. Uh-oh. If we have- Whoa, 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 <laughs> before you get, What's the five to one theory? What is the five to one theory? A machine, <laughs> an old machine. <laughs> Counting down, it's, it's kindergarten stuff, right? Five, four, three, two, one. A theory about something, maybe electronics. I don't know. How much electronics gets crushed? That's a very good question. I'm glad you asked me that question, actually. <laughs> I'm actually an expert in this area. <laughs> the five to one ratio is for every basket that is made, there has to be five players on the court from each team. That's a good one. That's what you should have, five vegetables, five bites of your vegetables for every piece of meat that you have when you eat. If you've got five pieces of material that are all the same, that are all broken, chances are you can make one work just combining the parts and pieces off of them. And, yeah. and in the LCD area, you're talking about anywhere from $1,000 to $3,500 of television. So it's worth doing that, Yeah. you know? There's no sense to destroying parts and pieces that could still be used. Okay. So we have a little different approach than, than, than everybody else. Well, you get a lot of TVs in. I already we showed you the about, plasma LCD section. You know, 3,000 flat screens a month, maybe, in that range. And they don't have lead in them either, do they? No. Ah, That's they, it. oh. it's worse. Uh, 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 <laughs> all right, so we got rid of the lead, now what's in them? Mercury. Uh. All right, what does LCD stand for? Likeable CD. Lotus Control Development. Look, control, and don't touch if mommy says not to. Electronic Connors Dimension. <laughs> <laughs> you must be Connor. <laughs> yes. Liquid crystal display. What is an LCD? A liquid crystal display. Liquid crystal display. Is every flat screen an LCD? You have uh, flat screens that could be a plasma. Uh -huh. You have flat panel, which is going to be an LCD. You have DLP, digital light projection. Flat screens are relatively simple to work on. 
There's right. not a lot of parts. You can see the plastic case. You can see the flat panel. Oh, so this is the flat, this is the liquid crystals in here. Is it really liquid? No, it's actually an indium oxide sandwiched between two thin pieces of plastic. And we're just taking a look at the, uh, the different light bulbs that are actually a part of a flat panel. One of them's broken, so to pull that one bulb out, it's much cheaper than going out and buying a whole new LCD. This is becoming more of the future of what you're gonna receive. That's correct. All right, and so you're gonna look at every single one of these? Yes. And say Everyone. what can be reused from this? Correct. Versus, mm -hmm. I'm just gonna take it, shred it, pull this well, out, pull that out. If we can find a reuse market or find a parts house that can use this part, yeah. that's our first option. We're gonna look to reuse first, recycle second. Well, not only can it be recycled, we use that word all the time, recycle, 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 but in that same phrase and sense, we should be talking about reuse. America is a wasteful nation. <laughs> and it, unfortunately, it's the truth. Yeah. And a lot of times, they'd rather throw it away than fix it. And we look at it and say, well, you know, with a little bit of effort, not a whole lot of money, we might be able to fix it, sell it. Yeah. And, well, and it's education. It. I didn't know you, I didn't know that. I've, you know, I, mean, I didn't either. <laughs> I didn't have anything burn out on me before. Yeah. I mean, my goodness. Fun fact, fun fact, fun fact. Here's your fun fact. Did you know that many TVs, DVDs, and CD players use energy even when they're switched off? I can't believe how much cool stuff you have here and that's recyclable. So tell us, where is all this gonna go that you don't pull apart and recycle? A lot of it is gonna get pulled apart and recycled right here. The things that are too big to get recycled right here are gonna end up going to another shredder in Northern California at ECS Refining. Okay, okay. so what are they gonna do with these precious metals? They're gonna melt it down, as you can see, and they're going to, they're gonna pour it into a bar. And you can see the silver bars that they're stacking up right there. Wow. There's about uh, 52 pounds per bar. <laughs> and that's, that's one of their main, their main um, sources of income has been silver refining from film and x-ray film. So it's funny because in all these, these, these CPUs, these, these computers we pulled apart, you have all these tiny pieces of gold and like correct. we're talking about precious metals, and they ultimately become these bars again, right? That's correct. Wow. Some of them actually go so far as to sweep the floor around the shredder because <laughs> gold is so soft uh -huh. that it's the first thing that gets, that gets disseminated into a powder and they'll sweep the floor up and most of the gold is in the dust. So it's a, it's, a very, it's a very interesting business. Wow. Fun fact, fun fact, fun fact. Here's your fun fact. Americans own nearly three billion electronic products. For those of you that don't know, Lyle, tell them what a baler is. Well, basically, when we can't reuse it, uh, refurb it, then we have to reduce the size. So that's what this machine does. It takes several bins material mm -hmm. to make this bill that we're standing on. People do not like to pay for air, so we eliminate it. Hmm. Make it into a nice, tight little bale. Oh, when you say air, it's right. like in a box, and you, when you crush you everything crush down, it all down, get rid of the air. Get rid of the air. Ah, and this is what this does. It makes it solid. On a very big scale. A very big scale, exactly. <laughs> All right, so tell us what's happening. The forklift is bringing the load in. Forklift's gonna bring the load in. It's a rotating forklift, and these bins have material in them. Uh, we separate it out by, you know, you've seen it before. It's metal, plastics, two kinds of plastics, and some uh, copper. Uh, what it's gonna do is dump it behind me. It's gonna push one button. The ram's gonna push it in. It's gonna make a bale. This thing's gonna push out gonna have an auto tie on it, so it's basically a one-step operation. You, you push the button and you walk away. Taking about how long? Mm, 30 seconds. 30 seconds. Yeah. And again, this is a big scale, because just like at home, when you know when you're, your parents say, hey, take out your trash, and so, maybe I'm the only one that did this, but <laughs> I take my foot in the trash can and go <laughs> and push it down, and we're, well, mom, what are you talking about? Trash doesn't need taken out right now. Right. All the air is gone. All the air is gone. <laughs> All <laughs> right, cool. And you can bail anything in here, like you said, or anything that has air in. Anything that has air in, anything that you want to reduce the size in because, you know, like I said, you're not going to get as much weight onto a truck when it's in full shape. Once you squeeze it down into a nice little brick, you can put a lot of little bricks into something and make the weight. That's and what people are looking for. Where is all this going? Well, this is going to go back to a metal smelter. Mm -hmm. They're going to send it through and then they're going to have a, a separation of it. There's some heavier metals and some lighter metals in this. Once it goes through the smelting, 
the, the lighter metals float to the top, the heavy metals go to the bottom, mm -hmm. and that's how they get their different streams. The plastics? The plastics, almost the same thing. It goes through a grinder, they get, they get ground into little pellets, and those pellets are then immediately ready to be reused into an injection molding for new plastic material. Cool. And the precious metals? Do you need any of those? Precious metals, not in this. Not yeah, in this. It's a little too precious for this machine. And on that note, we know about the Baylor. Right, so let's review. Reduce, reuse, recycle, and of course, rethink. I want to thank everyone out here at E-World Recyclers because what someone thinks is trash, someone else thinks is gold. And I especially want to thank you, Roger, for sending us on today's Curiosity Quest Goes Green. Hey, if there's something that you're curious about, let us hear from you. It's easy. Go online to kvcr.org, click on the Curiosity Quest link, and simply tell me what you're curious about. And it could be your thoughts to send us on our next green adventure. Now remember, this is our planet, and it's our responsibility to take care of it. So I'm curious, have you gone green? I'm Joel Green, and I'll see you next time. Oh, uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Oops, sorry about that. <laughs> ah, this is recyclable too, right? No. No, whoa, it works, Woohoo! yeah. You sure it's not recyclable? No. You know what though? I'm gonna reuse it. <laughs> <laughs>